Good afternoon from a rather chilly Canada. It's Monday lunchtime. Now, the reason why I'm doing this video is I need some suggestions from you because later on this week, on Friday, on Friday night, it's going to be minus 30. So it gives us an opportunity to do some tests. One of the tests we're going to check is the uh, rear view mirror that I've got in my Yaris. But I'm sort of running out of ideas for things to test. We've already uh, expanded a, what do we call it, a, a propane tank. That was a lot of fun. <clears throat> but I don't want to do the same things twice. So can you please come up with some suggestions what you'd like to see? Uh, the Saturday is going to be minus 26 and uh, then it's going to warm up again till about minus something or other. But anyway, let's take advantage of that. See what we can do. Now, talking about cold weather, I did get an email last week, which I didn't reply to yet because I was going to do this video in the cold, but somebody asked me about uh, preparing the Land Rover in England for cold weather. Well, I don't think they really realise what cold weather is. <laughs> so, like I said, I've got my 110 here, but I don't really use it all that much. Uh, my 130, but... Um, um, in this sort of when it gets to about minus 30 it's too cold well it's not too cold but it's it's okay to drive but it's not much fun now I'm going to tell you something interesting here in Canada I don't know anybody who drives a 110 or a, or a Land Rover Defender should I say or a series truck in winter not unless they're real diehards the reason for that is that if you've gone and spent Oh, I don't know, fifty to a hundred thousand dollars on a truck. You certainly are not going to drive it out in the salt. You know, if you've got you've got yourself a nice truck, you're not going to drive it out in the salt. And there isn't that many Land Rovers kicking about that's old beaters that you wouldn't want to drive it in the salt and the snow and the slush. So, really, we don't bother. And I mean, I don't know if you can see behind me, but the the road behind me. Like this, the, this, the council come and plough it out maybe sometimes twice a day and they grit it. So all I've got to do is get from there, you know, from my yard over to there and I'm fine. Now most of the time I can get the Yaris out. And then, even if I can't, it's just a little bit of shoveling where the wheels go and that's it, it's just out. Because, obviously, we have mandatory winter tyres here. In fact... I do, I do such little miles, I don't even bother changing tyres, I just leave them on all year round. Um, one thing I could su suggest if you really want to do a Land Rover for winter, but like you say, winter in England and winter in Canada is two totally different things. But this 130's got a block heater in it, that's an electric heater inside the, the engine itself, it goes inside the engine block, just like a little kettle element. But that needs about... 15-20 minutes to get it up to warmth so it will start the engine. The oil's still cold but believe it or not I use zero, uh, zero 030 weight oil full synthetic in that so oil's not really a problem. You know people say you should put maybe a, 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 an oil heater on the oil pan. Well I've tried one of them and it does next to nothing so that's a waste of time. Magnetic block heaters forget them they're an absolute waste of time. Um, what else? Yeah, but you, you could actually go to the trouble of putting a Web Asto or a Eberspark a, a heater on the engine so it's remote. And that's a pretty good idea if you're going to justify the costs and you can justify using it all the time. They're a very, very expensive piece of kit. And I'm not sure if the Chinese do like an independent water heater. Probably they do, but I've never really seen one. Um... Insulation is a very important thing as well. So even though this is an old rough truck, I have carpets inside. They're a bit beaten up, I must admit. They're not, none of them match. But that stops, the, you know, tries to stop at least the cold from the floor. And also inside the, the roof lining, that's got three quarters of an inch of closed cell foam stuck to the roof and then the headlining on top of it. Same with the doors and the door panels around the back. Stick it, you know, it's got foam inside, so it's pretty well protected. Another thing, like the heater itself, you've probably seen on videos I've done in the past with this truck, 
that uh, one of my little tricks is I put, this is a left-hand drive, so I put a right-hand drive heater on it, heater blower motor, should I say, and then I take an air duct from the footwell, cut a hole in the footwell, bring it through to the air intake now that's on the wrong way around. So now, instead of the motor being next to the bulkhead, the motor's now uh, on the, uh, nearer the front of the vehicle. But remember, even though the DC motors will go either way around, when you're spinning the fan, when you're spinning the motor, you, if you turn the wires the other way around, it'll go the other way around. Easy. But the blower's squirrel cage, they're handed left and right. So that's why we do it like that. But when the engine's warmed up, that thing is like an oven. Believe me, it's like an oven. Now, people say that doing it like that is not very good. You'll get condensation. I've never had condensation in it, so that seems to work quite well. Um, yeah, and one of my little stories, I, when I came here many, many years ago, I had a Jeep Comanche, uh, I think it was Comanche or Comanche, a two-wheel drive pickup. What a useless item that was, and it had the Renault diesel engine in it. I think the Renault, out of a Renault traffic. Oh man, what a bad combination that was. You couldn't drive it in, or even on the road that's like today, you, you would never get out the end of the road because uh, being an open differential, one wheel would slip and that's it, you're away. So we used, to, we used to drive it around with great big railway sleepers in the back just to keep some weight down. Waste of time, engine was rubbish. But anyway, what I was going to talk to you, say was once I had to go out to do some shopping and it was very cold, I think it was a minus 30, so I had the bloody thing plugged into the block eater you know, it had a little block heater in, and I had it plugged in. And I went downtown. It wasn't go, I didn't go very far. And uh, I went shopping for about 15, 20 minutes. Came back to it, and it... <laughs> it, wouldn't, it wouldn't start. It wouldn't have it. Um, so I ended up getting towed home. So perhaps you can see why diesels aren't all that popular here in Canada. So much so. One of the interesting things, when I was looking on the internet the other day, I was looking to see which manufacturers actually sell diesels here. And surprisingly enough, there wasn't that many. Now, I'm not talking about big pickups or anything like that. All I'm talking about is regular cars or light, light vans and things like this. The only um, import vehicles or uh, only cars for sale, um, BMW do a few diesels. Um, Chevrolet, they do a couple of models, and surprise, surprise, Land Rover. Jaguar Land Rover sell a diesel model here. Um, what, what is it they have? They have a Range Rover, Jaguar, and a Discovery. But the thing is, I've never even seen one. I've never, I didn't even know they actually did diesel Land Rovers here. So they do do them, but like I say, the, the technology is probably good. But you don't get Mercedes diesels here, Volkswagen, even Toyota don't do a diesel now. So I think it's to do with starting in when it's very cold and also the environmental, you know, red tape that binds all these manufacturers is getting sort of not really worth it. The, the, you can get good economy out of a petrol engine now as you can for a diesel. And <clears throat> another thing, why diesels are going out of fashion. I went to fill up the Yaris the other day and it was a dollar twenty a litre and was it a dollar twenty or is it a dollar oh there's a dollar twenty or and diesel was two two twenty six. No, it must have been a dollar fifty a dollar fifty for petrol and two and two twenty six for diesel for diesel. So it doesn't make any sense now for diesels. They're not the cheap vehicle that they used to be, you know. Uh, it, it's it's getting a bit bonkers now so the thing is with most defenders like the the tdis and the tdcis well we ain't got much choice of a petrol you know that's that's one of the things so anyway i think one of the one of the experiments like i say we'll have a look at the mirror for this and we also see if it'll start at minus 30 without plugging it in uh today's job should i accept it I'm going to take the battery out of the uh, 
this 110 and also out of the Range Rover and out of my forklift and bring them inside so we don't get that really freezing cold. I think that's sometimes what kills batteries really dead. The Yaris is all right because I, I start it quite regularly so it's fully charged. But there you go, so we've, we had a little bit of a snow as you can probably see. You know, a bit of snow, not too bad. But uh, yeah. So send me your thoughts and you know your ideas. Let's see what we can do. See you later.